Good morning. This is Tom Asbury with the Market Wrap video report for the week ending July 8th. Let's get to some charts. Here's the 260 minute chart of futures. Uh, you can see the last week's signal. It's a reverse to negative on Tuesday. Hit the first target at 37.55, uh, taking about 51 points. And then on the resulting reversal to the upside here on uh, the 5th, it gave back 34 of those points. So a uh, pretty nice move up towards the uh, end of the week. Uh, hit the first target at 38.95.16, um, you know, capturing 55 points. Uh, you can see the, uh, you know, the indicators are getting extended. Uh, the volume is a little, you know, slightly showing some loss of momentum. Stochastic confirmer, you know, has dropped out of over spot ranges. Um, and the current stop we're using now is 38.76. And that is in the email that was sent out to subscribers. Looking at the daily chart, one should be impressed, I hope I am, as to Jerry A's wonderful dynamic stop. You can see we had the buy and pretty much consolidated down, um, dropped below the stop level during the day, but never closed below it, keeping us on the long side, which is the way the week ended, is uh, the place I think we'd like to be. Um, you can see we still have upside targeted at 4124 and a quarter, and the current stop we're using here is 3796. 42. The stochastic confirmer here is bullish, rising, getting into overbought levels. Um, so that'll be something to think about next week. Prices declined late in the day here. So it was a generally negative close. And as that composite was higher, but not by much. Um, AD numbers negative on the NYSC, but positive on the NASDAQ composites. For the week on the NYSC, 1895 advances, 1583 decliners, quite positive action. NASDAQ, even better, 3360 versus 1842. We've been watching the bullish divergence on the NASDAQ 100 AD line. You can see it pop back above its flat moving average Friday, but still needs another strong push to the upside. Obviously, you can see we have these three weekly highs here around you know, 96, 95, etc. You need to close well above that, ideally getting it above even that high at 314.56, which is just above the 20 week declining moving average to confirm the divergence. So, next week's action will tell us more. Probably action early in the week will give us a good clue. The daily advanced decline analysis on the SP 500 and the stocks only and the NYCL. This let all does look less impressive. Um, you can see it was just sort of a you know mediocre rally to the upside here. Um, you know, like to see a move above that high, but you know, pretty much didn't do it last week. Volume not impressive. A little higher on Friday. Uh, you can see the S&P 500 AD line is turned down. You know, okay, lower high. So if it drops below here. It'll be in a new downtrend, um, closer to a new downtrend, you know, in the um, NYSE stocks only. Uh, it bounced into its moving average and then turned down, similar for the NYSE AD line, even below the short term resistance. A closer look at the NYAD shows you, you know, the, this has not been an impressive move to the upside. Um, you know, even back in May, you know, we got a pullback and then a sharp, strong day to the upside before the rally fizzled. Similarly, in March, you know, we saw this expansion of the advanced decline numbers. Haven't seen that yet. Looking at some of the sentiment numbers, uh, here we have the AI bullish drop back below 20% again. It's just down here and in, in levels actually rarely seen since the, uh, the early 90s. Um, so, uh, you know, it suggests that uh, investors are still thinking prices are going to be lower uh, in the next six months. Um, now, uh, maybe the, the bearish reading or the low bullish readings a month ago were based on inflation fears. Now that there are some tiny signs that inflation may be pulling back. Now they're worried about the recession. 
So, uh, you know, we'd like to see a new uptrend here. Um, even more surprising is the NAAIM equity exposure, which is also quite low at 27.50. I pretty much felt it get it back above this dashed line, which is around 50% before now, and it hasn't done it. So that's going to be the first sign that the, the institutional money is moving back into the market. Weekly S&P 500 AD line, you know, still in a downtrend, um, still below its moving average. Also, of course, I look at the hourly chart patterns. Um, those of you who study charts, I hope will look at this and think, uh, well, this is not great because it looks like a pause in the downtrend, not a bottom. You have this AB pattern here, um, you know, that goes from 393 down to 372. So, you know, 31 points wide, you know, if it breaks this level right here, that gives you 31 points down uh, to the downside which is what a lot of people are looking for in terms of the bearish camp. In fact, some of the bears got even more negative last week than they were before. Um, the OBV, you know, tells us a different picture. So early action in the week will be important. We, we broke out above, so the OBV is now stronger than it was back in early June. So that's a good sign. So, you know, be looking for pullbacks to hold this 382 area and then a decisive move above 393 um, early in the week. Of course, as always, following the 260 minute analysis will probably give us an early heads up on where the market is heading in the week ahead. So I hope you have a great weekend. We'll get back to you Sunday with the weekly doji report. Thank you very much. This video was sent out to subscribers to the Viper Hot Stocks Daily Alert on Saturday morning. And if you'd like to get it over the weekend, when it, just after it's released, you can sign up here on the viperreport.com. Just go to the Viper Hot Stocks Daily Alert Service and it'll show you how to uh, sign up and uh, you can go for either a month or three months. So hope you found it enjoyable. Thank you very much.